Welcome back. In the last video, we have seen the application of Z transforms to uh, solve uh, difference equations. We have seen many examples of uh, first order and second order uh, difference equations, and we have shown uh, the method of uh, solving. We just used only Z transform and its inverse transform, mostly uh, some of the properties to find the inverse transform, uh, finally, to see the solution of the difference equation. In this video, uh, we will have uh, another application of Z transform that is to uh, evaluate certain uh, infinite sums when it has a parameter which is uh, a discrete uh, parameter, let us say n, so that you can apply Z transform to it. This is similar to uh, the evaluating, uh, evaluating certain uh, integrals involving a parameter uh, by using uh, Laplace transforms that we have seen earlier. Okay? So, let us discuss uh, how to evaluate these uh, infinite sums. Before we do that, I will give uh, one uh, important property. So, one or two uh, properties of uh, Z transforms that we have uh, left out uh, that may be useful to in this uh, application. So, let me uh, state that and prove, and then we will do these uh, examples of uh, evaluation of these infinite products. Let us look at this uh, property, uh, property of uh, Z transform. Uh, that says uh, if uh, f of z is the capital F of z is is the uh, z transform of f of n. Okay, so this is small z. Okay, and then you have z transform of uh, let's say f or f of n by n. As a function of z, uh, as a function of z, this is equal to integral z to infinity. This capital F of z by z dz. Also, z transform of uh, f n by n plus m as a function of z. This is also from z to infinity you have uh, z power m comes out times z to infinity capital F z dz f over uh, z power m plus 1 dz. So, these are the two results that we will see now. Okay. So, this is the transform, this is a property of uh, 1 by n uh, product of 1 by n or uh, 1 by t times uh, the signal, time signal uh, f of t for which if you take the Laplace transform, we have similar uh, uh, property in terms of the integrals. So, this is analogous to that and let us uh, see how we prove this. This I think straightforward manner, uh, straightforward manner we can use. Since f of z is this, so we use the definition of this z transform and look at what is this uh, z to infinity integral for uh, capital F z by z dz. So, if you see this one, if I make use of this integral z to infinity and for the f of z, you write the definition of, definition of the z transform that is 0 to infinity f n uh, z power minus n uh, divided by z dz. So, this is same as integral uh, z to infinity sigma n is from 0 to infinity f of n times z power minus n minus 1 dz. Now, because this is, uh, if you assume that this is finite, um, if this is finite and uh, that means this is, uh, this is finite. So, once this is finite, these two sums can be interchanged and both should be same. Okay? So, what you have is uh, n 0 to infinity. So, under those assumptions, when f capital F of z by z is uh, integrable from z to infinity, complex integration, if it is uh, if it is finite, then uh, this double sum, this is one is the integral, other one is the sum, both you can interchange. So, that is the kind of theorem that we have already seen as uh, double integrals, iterated integrals you can interchange, uh, order of integration uh, when you have a double integral is uh, uh, finite. Okay? So, the similar uh, thing here. So, now if I interchange uh, this sum and the integral, uh, what you have is uh, f n comes out if I interchange f of n, it is nothing to do with z. So, this dz 
and now you have z power minus n minus 1. So, this is nothing but n is from 0 to infinity f n and this one if you integrate z power minus n minus 1 plus 1. So, that is this divided by uh, minus n and now you substitute these limits z equal to z by z to infinity. So, if we substitute you can easily see what is this one. So, this is f of n infinity because it is 1 by z power n that goes to 0 for every n equal to 0. Okay. So, n equal to 0 uh, what happens n equal to 0? n equal to 0 case you have z power minus 1 integral z to infinity dz this is log z okay this is log z and uh, you substitute log infinity minus log z so that is uh, so you see that this this is not, not finite thing okay so but then we have as assumed that uh, you have a z transform of this which is running from so you have uh, this should exist okay to for to see that this exists left hand side you have as a trans definition is f of n divided by n, n is running from 0 to infinity. This is the definition of this, this is this exists, okay. This is uh, finite for some domain in the complex plane. So, that means f n by n, that means f of 0 is 0. So, it is like 0 by 0 form, okay, or f of n. So, if this exists means if n equal to 0 because you have division with 0, f of 0, this is z power minus 0 that is 1 f of 0, f of 0 has to be, so f of 0 has to be 0. If this exists, f of 0 has to be 0. So, in that case, f of 0 by n, okay, and you have z power minus n. So, that is z power 0, which is running from infinity minus 1. So, that is 0 minus 0, okay. So, you have this, and you have a similar n equal to 0, you have already 0 by 0 form. So, when n equal to 0, you have 0 by 0 form times what is left is z power minus n that is uh, uh, z power 0 that is simply 1, okay. z power minus n that is if you do that, so that integral will be, will be uh, z power. Uh, so, uh, when you see when you see this one, this this part when n, when you put uh, you can take this n out, f n is f n should be 0 if it exists and you have 0 by 0 form times and this one. So, this means this should be finite quantity and something indeterminate. So, this quantity should be finite if it exists. So, f of 0 by 0 this is any finite quantity times this you have n when you put n equal to 0 this is simply 1. So, when you substitute the limits 1 minus 1 that is 0. So, finite quantity times 0. So, n equal to that is 0 and what is left is n is from uh, 0 to n is from 1 to infinity f n by n and what you have at n to infinity z power minus n and n is running from 1 to infinity that is 0 and you have a minus minus plus and you have that that will become z power minus n. And you have seen that n equal to 0 this quantity is 0. So, what you have is you already got a 0 quantity whatever there. So, you can include that part here. So, this is nothing but z transform of uh, f n by n as a function of z. So, wherever you have the this this is fine this exists this exists uh, that is the same in the same domain this also uh, the definition of this z transform of f n by n. So, z belongs to the same domain uh, wherever this z transform of f n okay. whatever be the domain here should be the domain of this here. So, I just uh, verified uh, right hand side is equal to left hand side. You can do the same way uh, to show the uh, second part. Uh, second part if you do uh, right hand side if you consider z power m times integral z to infinity capital F of z dz by z power m plus 1 if you take uh, this is equal to z power m times integral z to infinity this is summation n is running from 0 to infinity f of n times z power minus n dz by z power m plus 1 uh, that you can put it here. So, that will become n minus m minus 1. So, if you actually do this z power m. So, this is nothing to do with this you can take it inside 
So, you cancel this with this minus m, so that you have simply this. So, you can take this uh, summation outside, you can integrate f n times the same technique uh, f n z power minus n minus 1 dz. So, you have already seen that this is nothing but uh, f n by n, that is f n by n, right. So, f n, but you want uh, n plus m to get this. So, you have, uh, let me, I think I have made some mistakes. So, we have z power m, let me use. We have z power, when you do this uh, 1 by z power, so we have minus n minus m minus 1 uh, dz. So, let me let me do this, this is equal to z power m times z to infinity uh, or now I interchange this sums uh, f n this integral z to infinity z power minus n minus m minus 1 dz. So, if you do this z power m times sigma n is from 0 to infinity f n this will become z power minus n minus m divided by uh, n plus m minus m minus n plus m. So, if you substitute these limits, this integrand is this antiderivative is this. If you substitute, you simply end up getting uh, z power m times n is from 0 to infinity. Now, you can remove this, this, this goes. So, you can remove f n times or f n divided by n plus m at infinity that is becoming 0 as you have seen earlier f n has to be 0 the same case and n is running from uh, what is m? m is running from 0, 1, 2, 3 onwards. If it is 0 this is the it is it's a case of 1 as you have seen already uh, both the uh, when uh, for all cases and, and m is 0, 1, 2 whatever be the case if uh, n is 0, if m equal to 0 case, you have if m equal to 0, this n equal to 0, you have a 1 by 0 form. So, in that case, f n has to be 0, that is what you have seen already. Uh, you have 0 by 0 form, that is a finite quantity. Z power minus m, when you substitute, when you put n equal to 0, that is a simply 1. So, when you substitute the limits, 1 minus 1, that is 0. And m is not equal to 1, uh, not equal to 0 that is m is running from uh, m is uh, either 1 or 2 or 3 and so on you can easily see that this is going to be uh, this comes out and you simply have uh, uh, you can see that n is even at n equal to 0 uh, n equal to 0 you have 0 by some non zero quantity times 1 minus 1 okay so even in that case m is not equal for all m 0 0 case we have already seen when it is 1, 2, 3 and so on, m in that case n plus m will be non-zero, but f of 0 is 0 and z power minus 0 that is 1. So, 1 minus 1 that quantity is 0 into 0, so there is no issue n equal to 0, the whole contribution is 0, n equal to 1 onwards. So, anyway this is uh, this is becoming 0, infinity contribution at z equal to infinity that is 0 and minus of minus this minus make it simply z power minus n. So, this is nothing but your uh, z transform of f n by n plus m as a function of z. So, again uh, z transform this uh, definition of this z transform, the domain of this z transform is same as a domain of z transform of f n. Okay. So, these two properties we use uh, to evaluate certain infinite sums. Let us do one more some examples. So, uh, summation of uh, summation of infinite series. So, we get this infinite uh, sums. So, first uh, start with uh, before I do this uh, let me let me do some uh, some more result. So, this is one and another one is uh, another property that we have is uh, so, this is one property that we use and uh, another property is uh, if f of z is uh, capital F of z is the z transform of f n as a function of z, then this uh, sigma k is from 1 to n f of k, this finite sum 
is same as z inverse or rather z transform of this finite sum as a function of z is same as is actually equal to z by z minus 1 f of z okay so again the definition of z is uh, domain of capital f of z and this is one and uh, one more uh, thing we have a result is if you look at this infinite sum k is from 1 to infinity f of k this is actually a limit z goes to 1 z into capital f of z so this is nothing but capital f of 1 because it's analytic function both this is z is analytic function capital f of z is analytic function in the domain wherever it is defined so if you approach in that domain z to 1 this is what happens okay so to do that one should be in the part of the domain of uh, definition of f of z so let us keep that in mind let us give the proof so what i do is i consider this as a new uh, new uh, discrete signal that is let us call it some g of n as this summation k is from 1 to n f of k if i do this then what I get is uh, g n plus 1 minus g n is same as f of n right uh, or z n plus 1 is uh, actually equal to g n plus f n plus 1 right that is f n plus 1. So, it is you are adding 1 to n plus 1 for this in that you are removing uh, 1 to n so you have you are left with this. So, now you can use uh, you can also rewrite this as uh, g n minus g n minus 1 equal to f of n I can rewrite so this is running from uh, n is from here if I do this uh, it's, uh, because g is this uh, it's, uh, it's running from 1 to 3 onwards right it is 1 to 3 onwards so if I want the transform I should include 0 also right you have this so if here if I include uh, n equal to 0 fine just leave it so you have uh, uh, g of uh, 0 is 0 g of if I take g of 0 which is equal to 0 from this okay uh, g of 0 is, is 0 because f of in that case f of 0 uh, f is running from k is from 1 to 0 so it is not defined Okay, so let us not worry so simply you have uh, this is the case n is from 1 to 3 onwards this is still true assume that g of 0 is 0 if you do this g of 0 is 0 okay uh, to include uh, let me instead of taking k is from 1 to n let me add uh, here 0 0 to n so that what is your g of 0 g of 0 in that case will be simply f of 0 so it is well defined okay so if I take this one and what you get is uh, n is running from in case 0 uh, 1 2 3 onwards okay f is also but f is running from uh, 1 2 onwards so this you can write you can rewrite this as uh, 0 1 2 3 onwards of course uh, you negative uh, g of negative things uh, which is 0 so if i if i put n equal to 0 g of minus 1 and that is has to be 0 okay you can consider this under this now you apply uh, z transform z transform application of z transform to the above uh, differential equation difference equation gives what we get uh, this is z transform of g let us write capital g of uh, z and here a negative when it is a g n minus m what is happening is z minus power minus 1 simply g of z okay and then this is equal to capital f of z so this is what you have so you have a g of z times 1 minus 1 by z that is simply z by z minus 1 by z is equal to f of z uh, so this gives me uh, g of z as 
z over z minus 1 times capital F of z. So, what we require is g of uh, the transformer. So, the transform of this is equal to so it is a, a mistake, it should be from 0 to n, okay. it is from 0 to in infinity, then it is all makes sense. So, if I consider this, this is from 0 to n, then I can do this, uh, I can assume this and get the difference equation, apply the z transform and get this. Now, inverse transform gives inversion gives g of n, that is what you want, which is summation. Uh, this is exactly what you have that is your first uh, part this is the transform of this g of n uh, is equal to z over z by n. So, inversion gives uh, if you actually do the inversion uh, you get uh, g of n equal to uh, z inverse on inversion of z by z minus 1 times f of z. Okay. This is one result what we need so, so that is your first part. A second part to see the second part, the second part is straightforward. So, what we do is I allow this so g of n is simply n is from 0 to k is from 0 to n uh, f of k equal to. Uh, so, here if I look at this, this is your z transform of uh, this. Uh, let me write. So, this is uh, if I take this n goes to infinity. So, that is actually your uh, full sum k is from 0 to infinity f of k. This is equal to this and now this is equal to limit n goes to infinity. What is that we use here? I think this is where we use uh, uh, final value, final value theorem if we use here. So, can we recall uh, what is the final value theorem? So, if I recall final value theorem, final value theorem that uh, one of the properties that we have seen earlier, if f of capital F of z is the z transform of uh, discrete signal f n sequence f n, then limit n goes to infinity f of n is the same as a limit z goes to 1 and z minus 1 times capital F of z. So, this is what is the final value theorem. So, if I use here for this g, okay, this is this, a limit of this is same as a limit of z goes to 1. Instead of f n, I have this g n. So, limit z goes to 1, z minus 1, capital G of z. So, this is same as limit z goes to 1, z minus 1 times g of z I use here, z divided by z minus 1 times capital F of z. So, this gets cancelled what you have is simply capital F of 1. So, this sum is k is from 0 to infinity F of k uh, this simply F of uh, 1 that is your uh, second part this is what you want. Okay. So, with this we will try to get this uh, infinite sum uh, summations. So, let us evaluate uh, some infinite sums simple sums uh, to start with the simple sums uh, summation of summation of infinite series. This is what we want to do. So, to start with these examples let us me start with uh, show that uh, show that by z transform Uh, n is from 0 to infinity uh, x power n by n factor. We already know this uh, standard sum, infinite sum. The stellar series is simply e power x. So, we will show this uh, by z transform. So, if you actually apply, uh, we make use of one of the properties of z transform that is z transform of x power n times f of n if you see this one, this is actually equal to z transform of, uh, this is actually z transform of uh, f of n of uh, instead of z you have z by x. 
So, this is same as capital F of Z transform of F n capital F argument is Z by X. So, if I use this, this is straightforward, but this is nothing because n is from 0 to infinity x power n f n z power minus n by definition. So, you can include here you have z by x power minus n. If I remove this, this is same as this. This is nothing but capital F of z by x. Okay. So, it is straightforward. So, by definition you can get this property since because of this. So, what is my f n? If f n is uh, f of n is 1 by n factorial. So, what is the z transform? z transform of uh, f of n. If f of n is this, z transform of f of n of z of is simply n is from 0 to infinity, f of n is 1 by n factorial z power minus n. So, this becomes this is simply uh, 1 by e power 1 by z. Okay. So, we know already that this is the this is true. So, what happens to z transform of uh, x power n by n factorial from this, this is nothing but e power because of the f z transform of uh, f n is the argument x z by x. So, if you replace z uh, z by z by x, so it is going to be x by z. Okay. Z transform of this is this. Now, if I use the second part of this, uh, this, this is the second part of this uh, property, the summation of uh, f of k, k is running from 0 to infinity is z transform of f of k at, uh, at z equal to 1. So, I know what is the z transform of x power uh, n by n factorial that is e power x, x by z. So, you have the summation uh, k is running from 0 to n, uh, 0 to infinity f of n. So, that is x power k by k factorial. Okay. So, that is this f of k is x power k by k factorial equal to z transform of this that is e power k x by z at z equal to 1. So, this is simply e power x. So, this is how you can prove that this uh, infinite sum is the standard exponential sum that is exponential function uh, that is a is also happen to be the Taylor series for this exponential function from the calculus. Let us do some uh, not so easy problems uh, evaluation of this uh, integral uh, infinite sums. Uh, Let us do uh, find uh, show that let me write n is from 0 to infinity minus 1 power n x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 is equal to log 1 plus x. So, how do I show this uh, infinite sum? x is the parameter. Okay. So, when you have this x parameter, you have uh, this one. So, what we do is uh, this solution z transform of x power n plus 1. Let me consider. Okay. Uh, z transform of x power n plus 1 is equal to uh, same as x comes out z transform of x power n. This is uh, the function of z. This is simply x times z by z minus x. I have seen a power n z by z minus a. So, that is what I have used. So, you have z x by z minus x is this z transform. Now, you can use the uh, property uh, first property that we have uh, just uh, proved we can make use of uh, a second property here. If you use this here uh, if I use this here the second property you know f of n uh, let me see this. If I use that property uh, z transform of uh, x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 as a function of z, this is equal to and uh, you have uh, integral and you have a z, z power m, m is 1. And so, z m z times z to infinity capital F of z that is the z transform of uh, this function that is z x by z minus x 
divided by uh, 1 by z power m plus 1, m is 1, so you have z square dz. So, so this is equal to simply you have uh, x comes out, so you have x z and you have z to infinity and z comes out because it's nothing to do with this integration variable z. Okay, so you have a z z goes here. You have simply one by z into z minus x dz. So this is nothing but x z z to infinity. You can write as partial fractions here. That becomes one by uh, one by z minus x minus one by z. If you do this, I have it, that becomes uh, x by. So you can, you can include here x x you can take this x oh, let me write this okay what do, what is this one this is actually uh, x by z into z minus x but you have only so instead of this that you can write it here you can include uh, this one the x divided by this become this is actually equal to x divided by z z into z minus x so that is that i am replacing is dz so you have z times this is simply if you take the log z minus x uh, minus log z, so you can uh, write log z minus x by z and you include this one. You, you substitute these limits for this function, so you get uh, only for this. Okay? So z times at infinity log 1 as z goes to infinity z minus x, x is finite, so that is 0 and you have uh, minus this is minus log z minus x by z that is exactly what we have so uh, this is going to be minus z times log z minus x by z this what what you have is z transform of x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 as a function of z now i replace here x by x can be anything here so far Okay. So, if I replace x by minus x here, replace x by minus x, if you do uh, we get uh, what we get is z transform of minus x minus x will be uh, minus 1 minus x minus x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 for this z transform you get minus z log z plus x by z okay but this is nothing but z transform of uh, minus you can take it out this is going to be a constant right so you have a minus 1 power n uh, plus 1 so that n you put it inside and put my on minus so you have 1 uh, minus 1 power n x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 but this is same as minus z log z plus 1 by z, z plus x by z. So minus minus goes both sides. So you have this is uh, this is what you have. Now again you can apply this uh, infinite sum. This is what you know and now you can have this infinite sum. N is uh, k is from 0 to infinity uh, minus 1 power k x power uh, k plus 1 by k plus 1 this infinite sum is nothing but limit z goes to 1 uh, z minus 1 times uh, z into uh, so you have seen what, do you, what is this one z into z into this uh, if you see this uh, this is what we are using okay f of 1 is nothing but uh, z into f of z okay z into f of z so basically this is what we are using this infinite sum is equal to limit z goes to on z into f of z so we have we know what is capital f of z so you have z into uh, z into capital f of z is this one that is z square log z plus x by x z plus x by z so as z goes to 1 so what you get is this is simply log 1 plus x this is what we need to show that is exactly what we have okay 
So, this is how we can apply the Z transforms and uh, find these infinite sums like this. So, let me do one more uh, example. I mean, call it 3. Uh, this example is find the sum, find the sum, infinite sum, sigma n is from 0 to infinity, a power n sin n x. x is the variable. So, again, uh, I can follow the same technique. So, solution uh, z transform of uh, f of n, which is sin n x. Let us take the sin n x. If you know the sin n x, uh, you can take this a power n sin n x, sin n x, the same as z transform of, there is a function of z, this is same as uh, z transform of uh, sin n x. Uh, now, instead of z, you have z by a. Okay. This argument z, you have z by a. So, this is, uh, so if you know what is a, you know already what is the z transform of sin n x, that is z times uh, sin x by z square minus 2 z cos x plus 1. In the place of this, you replace, this is uh, instead of z, you have z by a. So, you have z by a square, z by a and so on. So, what you have is simply uh, a a gets cancelled. So, it goes up 1 a. So, you have z a sin x divided by z square minus 2 z a cos x plus a square. So, this is this is what you know. So, z transform of this argument. Now, you can apply that uh, property so that you can get the sum n is from 0 to infinity, a power n sin n x is simply a limit z goes to 1, but the final value theorem if you use z goes to 1 into z into f of z. So, z into f of z is this. So, you have uh, uh, this simply you have this here. So, z a sin x by z square minus 2 z a cos x plus a square. So, as z goes to 1, what is this value? It's simply 1. So, you have a sin x divided by 1 minus 2 a cos x plus a square. So, this is exactly the sum uh, value of the sum. Okay? So, this is how we can get the infinite sums, certain infinite sums you can evaluate using the z transform. Okay? So, with this uh, we end this uh, Z transforms, uh, Z transforms, inverse Z transforms and their applications. We have given uh, two applications of these Z transforms. You may also find uh, some other places where you can use these Z transforms. Wherever you see some uh, um, sequences and you want to evaluate certain nth term of the sequence, uh, you can apply, you can, uh, you can try to apply the Z transform. And based on this uh, inverse Z transforms, you can get back your F of N. Okay? So, you can use this technique, uh, try to find other applications in other areas. So, thank you for watching. Uh, this is the end of the course. So far, we have seen, uh, maybe let me conclude properly. So, in this course, uh, what we had is uh, a Fourier series to start with uh, periodic signal, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, we find the infinite series for that as a Fourier uh, transform. Uh, inverse Fourier transform. Fourier transform will be simply Fourier coefficients. They are, uh, so, you have uh, those Fourier coefficients are defined over only those periodic part. So, that is a Fourier transform. Inverse transform is basically Fourier series. And then you extended this to infinite uh, periodic, non-periodic signal that is fully minus infinity infinity signal over the full real line. And you ended up getting using this uh, uh, periodic signal, we defined uh, we get the this uh, in uh, Fourier transform for a non-periodic signal that is that gives the uh, Fourier transform and its inverse transform over a full real line. So, the some uh, uh, byproducts of this are uh, other uh, Fourier transforms such as sine Fourier transform, sine transform, uh,
cosine transform and also you can have a different versions of these Fourier transforms. Um, that is what you have seen uh, in the Fourier transform and then uh, using this uh, Fourier integral theorem the same uh, definition of the Fourier transform inverse transform the, uh, uh, the, the theorem uh, based on which we have uh, defined the Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform. We made use of this to extend the class of functions for which you can define your Fourier transform so that you ended up uh, getting into a complex plane that is where you have seen a different transform that is a Laplace transform and its inverse transform are the results and uh, you have seen all its properties and its applications in uh, differential equations and other, uh, other areas evaluating some integrals. So, you have seen many applications in the for both uh, Fourier, and, uh, Fourier and Laplace transforms and uh, if you take the signal uh, which is a discrete signal uh, we can have a discrete version of the Lap, uh, Laplace transform that is exactly is your uh, Z transform that is what you have seen last few uh, videos. So, again uh, we have uh, given uh, how to find these Z transforms, inverse transforms and certain properties based on which we uh, give the application of these Z transforms to solve uh, difference equations and then uh, evaluating some infinite sums. Okay. So, this is a comprehensive course of these four transforms, thank you.